Good afternoon, this is Nick Workman with Nelson Laboratories. Today we're going to be talking about United States and European disinfection process. How they're similar, how they're different, and then what you would need to you know, submit to one of the two different regulatory bodies and hopefully get a 510K approval for a disinfection. So what is disinfection? Disinfection really is defined by the uh, killing of a specific level of organism, depending on the level of disinfection, um, and rendering the device free of those organisms so it's safe to handle for the person using the device on the patient or the actual person processing it for the next step of the reprocessing step. Disinfection typically is done on devices that either cannot be sterilized or don't require sterilization. And one big difference between the US and Europe um, is, is when disinfection is required. And that's something that I'm going to go into detail. Per ISO 17664, disinfection should be done for, there, there should be a manual disinfection process if the devices are manually cleaned. And there should be an automated disinfection process if the devices are put in an automated uh, washer disinfector. There are three levels of disinfection, high, intermediate, and low. Uh, high level is typically done on critical or some semi-critical devices. Intermediate level disinfection is mostly semi-critical devices, but can be, depending on the exposure of blood to the device, can be a non-critical device uh, change to requiring an intermediate level disinfection. An uh, example of that would be a glu uh, blood glucose meter where you would, it's non-patient contacting, but you need to do intermediate level disinfection because of the exposure to blood. A uh, low level disinfection example of that would be non-patient contacting non-critical devices such as IV monitors, bed rails, uh, non-porous surfaces, stuff that wouldn't contact the patient, uh, and then is non-critical. So for a critical device or high-level disinfection, these requirements are pretty much the same across U.S. and Europe. Um, six log reduction of microbacterium species for a high-level disinfection. For semi-critical devices, it's um, intermediate-level disinfection. And so it's the same organism as a high-level disinfection, but you only need a three-log reduction. And then you have to test four vegetative organisms and achieve a six-log reduction of those. For the non-critical devices, a low-level disinfection, the requirement is four vegetative organisms with a six-log reduction. So once you figure out what level of disinfection that you need to do, the next part is actually validating that process. So the, there's really four phases of a disinfection validation. The first phase is the neutralization testing. And what we do with that is you are showing that whatever chemical you're using for the disinfection process, you're going to be able to neutralize that at whatever time point that you're going to stop. So if your instructions in your IFU say, using Cytex OPA soak for 12 minutes, we need to be able to, in the validation, show that at 12 minutes, the level of disinfection indicated by a high level of disinfection was achieved that didn't receive an additional kill by the disinfectant remaining on your device. Next part is the actual disinfection validation, where you would inoculate the sample with a known concentration of organisms, you would expose it to the chemical and then look for the log reduction that we discussed in the previous slide. The cytotoxicity testing, this is a little bit different than what you would do on uh, your materials. In this cytotox testing, we're looking to make sure that the chemical used for the disinfection was removed during the rinsing process to a level that is not going to cause a cytotox effect on the patient. So we're not looking at any sort of materials other than maybe the chemical and the materials interact in a way, but really what we're looking for is that the chemicals are removed. 
then the bioload reduction evaluation, that's just your end result showing that you met the log reduction requirement. The disinfection validation process can be broken out into really three main processes. And this is where you're going to see some of the differences between the U.S. and the European market. Manual cleaning or manual disinfection, uh, soaking, spraying, wiping. So that's using a, you know, just either immersion or the two-in-one wipe, super sandy cloth, heavy wipe, something along those lines that you're actually wiping, spray wiping the device. Automated AERs, usually for endoscopes, that's similar to a washer disinfector. It's, a, it's specifically designed for endoscopes, and you place the scope in, and it runs it through a disinfection cycle. Then thermal disinfection, utilizing a washer disinfector, and this is where the big difference is between the U.S. and the European markets. The main difference will be for thermal disinfection in the U.S., you're looking for a log reduction requirement, whereas in the uh, EU market, they are doing what's called an ACE of zero. And I'll go in a little more detail about what ACE of zero is, but just take note that that is the big difference between the U.S. and uh, European market is the automated thermal disinfection process. Pasteurization is another method of disinfection utilizing just hot water. Uh, it's typically done in, in areas where uh, chemicals are not readily available or areas where uh, the preference is to use non-chemical based disinfection. Uh, Canada is one of these that typically prefer pasteurization over a chemical disinfection process. It's just uh, the process of using hotter, hot water, approximately 70 to 75 degrees C, and exposing the, the devices to that bath for approximately 30 minutes. So high-level disinfection, some of the chemicals um, listed here are some examples of chemicals used for high-level disinfection. Glutaraldehyde is, is kind of the, the most common use in the U.S. Um, Cydex is a common trade name that we use. Hydrogen peroxide uh, is another chemical that is used for high-level disinfection and along with parasitic acid. The hydrogen peroxide and parasitic acid are typically chemicals used in the European market, whereas the glutaraldehyde is something that the U.S. uses. Intermediate and low-level disinfection, both of these are typically done using the same chemical. Um, the only difference really is the fact that you just have to have that additional organism that we discussed earlier, the Imtera versus just the four vegetatives. The EPA is the, pers or the group that governs low and intermediate level disinfections, uh, disinfectants in the U.S. So isopropyl alcohol, quaternary ammonia compounds, uh, some examples, cavicide, chlor chlorine, bleach solutions are some of the different types of lower intermediate level disinfectants. And just to add to that, anytime you're doing the disinfection validation, you want to make sure, specifically in the U.S., that the chemical is approved by the appropriate body, uh, i.e. the high level disinfectants are governed by the FDA, whereas the low and intermediate level disinfectants are governed by the EPA. So if you were to um, find the list that approved disinfectants, you would make sure, want to make sure that your chemical is on that list. So ACE of zero is the, the one that I discussed earlier, and where it's the specific for the European Union. And it, it's kind of a different approach to doing disinfections because we're not really looking for any kind of kill of microorganisms. Uh, I put the definition of ACE of zero here uh, of how it's found in some of the guidance documents. So basically, it's very similar to F sub zero for sterilization. We're looking at a time versus temperature kill rate um, using a certain D value and, and Z values of microorganisms. So typically what you would do, and this is done in a washer disinfector, is you would use temperature probes. You would place it in the worst case loca uh, locations of your test devices. 
run the cycle at a specific temperature, for example, 90 degrees C for a minute and a half, monitor that temperature over a time interval, uh, usually the minute and a half, every, and taking a temperature reading every five seconds, and then perform this calculation, this A sub zero calculation, to determine the actual value. And you're going to get a value like 600 or 3,000. There's no units involved with that. It's just a, a number indicating what level or A sub zero level you've reached. Typically, you're looking for a 600 for a non-critical device or a device that will be terminally sterilized, a 3,000 for a device that requires or does not require sterilization or will be used after the, uh, after the fact. Um, most washer disinfectors are capable of doing this, uh, but you want to make sure that when you're doing the validation, you're using a washer that is capable of achieving an ACE of 0 or 3,000. And that's outlined in ISO 15883. Here's some examples, again, of the difference in the two markets. Um, Glutaraldehyde solutions, typically in the U.S., EU, pure acetic acid, hydrogen peroxide, thermal disinfection, log reduction based disinfectants or disinfection process in the ACE of zero for the EU. Um, both types of dis disinfection processes need to be validated if marketed in both EU and US. So what that means is if you have an automated washer validation and you want to market in both the US and the EU, uh, when you do the validation, if your terminal step is sterilization in the US, then you're, after you do your automated cycle, you're pretty much done. You don't, there's really no other steps except validating the sterilization process. However, if you're in the European market, you will need to validate that thermal disinfection process utilizing that ACE of zero method. And so that, that's where the big difference in, in everything comes into play with the two disinfection methods. That concludes the webinar, a brief description on the differences in the US and EU market. If you have any questions, feel free to reach out to me at Nelson Laboratories. Contact information is, is listed. Thank you and have a wonderful day.